Now, before I start my speech, I would like to tell you a bit more about myself. When I was a kid, I used to love magic tricks. The many boxes of magic tricks in my room can be evidence of that. I would just stare at magic tricks in awe because I wouldn't get them. I was so confused. I would spend hours looking at magic tricks on YouTube as well, trying to understand them, and I still would fail. And to be honest, thank God I'm not doing a magic trick in front of you guys. You guys would hate it. But there's one thing I take away from that. As a kid, my quest for answers is what made me happy. And as I grew up, that love for answers translated from magic to physics. Those of you in the crowd who already know me will know this for a fact. I'm probably the biggest physics nerd alive. <laughs> and I take that for granted. I mean, I see it as a worthy title. So when I heard the theme, wish it, dream it, do it, I just stood there, shocked. I was like, how on earth am I going to link it to physics again? I mean, it didn't seem possible. Or did it? I think we can all agree when I say it's a very widespread and common idea that physicists and scientists in general are the most rational and cold-blooded people on Earth. I mean, their whole job rests on giving explanations based on evidence in the real world for phenomena that surround us on a day-to-day -day basis. And yet, what if I told you that this wasn't necessarily the case? That the image wasn't as clear-cut clear as it seemed? And to prove this to you, I would like to take you on a journey. A journey that started all the way back in ancient Greece and that continues nowadays. A journey on the way to find the tiny building blocks of our universe, the atoms and also a journey on why you should start dreaming like a physicist. The first reason I will talk about is that dreaming like a physicist makes you more creative. For now, let's zoom in on a very specific event on atomic theory that happened in the early 20th century. As a bit of background, during the 20th century, so many discoveries around the atom were made. However, the theory that was settled upon at the start of the century was this one. You can comment on my horrible artistic skills, but you're seeing this correctly. The leading scientific theory at the time when it comes to our universe was a plum pudding model. J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model. The same one as you would eat during Christmas. However childish this, this might seem, this was the most scientifically accurate theory at the time and was based on real evidence. At least that's until 1913 when a Danish physicist named Niels Bohr arrived. I mean, don't worry, surely his new theory can't be as ludicrous as this one. Surely we've reached the epitome of this, right? Well, unfortunately for you, think again. Niels Bohr's theory was also based on a dream. More precisely, a dream he had about the solar system, which then led to his planetary atomic model. As crazy as this might seem, this theory was barely altered by the scientific community and was even helped by other scientists, such as Rutherford or Marsden, to name a few. And his model was an amazing contribution that led the scientific theory of the atom forward. New theories and new ideas were added onto this model, such as quantified angular momentum. Therefore, what we can take from this is that not only can dreams bring new ideas to the table, 
but they are an essential part when it comes to brainstorming. Helping everybody consider all ideas, no matter how ridiculous they might seem in the first place. The second reason I would like to tell you to dream like a physicist is because it would make you a better learner. More precisely, it would make you an inquirer. Visualization, when you talk about such small quantities and such tiny scales, like. Need to have imagination as a medium to do so. When we talk about the scientific method, it is a continuous cycle of observation, creating a hypothesis, trying to disprove it, finding its limits, seeing where it breaks down, and most importantly, if it's successful, using it as a new base to build upon. So, how exactly does that help us? Well, by pushing an idea to its limits. We can become a better observer, ask the right questions, and find different alternative angles, better alternatives. A great example of this, if we continue our journey down the atomic model theory, is Schrödinger's mod model, also known as Schrödinger's cat. I see some of you are confused in the crowd. I mean, surely this is not a cat. I mean, I know I'm bad at drawing, but still. So how can we explain this? How can we explain such a different idea based on the same model? Well, this model is an extension of Bohr's model. However, it tackles it on a very different basis. One flaw of Bohr's model was a mathematical idea, a mathematical flaw in it, more precisely. Therefore, Schrödinger managed to tackle that flaw in a very Visual way to get us closer and closer from the truth by re redefining and refining Bohr's original model. Finally, the third reason why you should start and dream like a scientist is because sometimes it is the best way for us to visualize new concepts. <laughs> At times, our brains cannot process. Such small-scale quantities or such massive concepts when it comes to the atom or the universe. So the best way to visualize it is to use these ideas through the medium of imagination. Back on our journey through the atomic theory, one of the fields born from these, all these discoveries came around the 1950s, where a new field of physics was created. A field of physics you all know. Named quantum physics, or in other words, the physics of the smallest building block of our universe, even smaller than the atom. And as a final example, I am going to talk to you about my favorite physicist, a man named Richard Feynman. Famous for his eccentric personality and his distinctive education style, and also for playing the bongos. Feynman managed to portray certain ideas of quantum physics by being able to visualize them in a very simple manner, in a way no other person could. By placing them on a very simple diagram and only focusing on one idea, he was able to tell the whole picture, which gave birth to the eponymous Feynman diagrams. Although this might seem at first glance just like a bunch. Of lines that mean nothing. This is such a breakthrough that it was revolutionary. They reply, these diagrams symbolize such complex ideas in such a visual, simple manner that they brought to life his teaching style, and their explanations became clear. The way he found of explaining such complex ideas into such simple terms. Are what defined him, and redefined physics. One of the many reasons why he won the physics Nobel Prize. So, what can we learn from this? Despite the cliche that of the nerdy scientist who uses brute force mathematics and pure rationale, scientists also depend massively on their intuition and their imagination. They apply those pre-established theories and principles to make new knowledge. Obviously, even though the base is the same, 
models, diagrams, thought experiments, allegories, whatever you want, can be totally different in its representation. If you had to remember one thing from my speech, it's that you should use your imagination like a scientist or a physicist. Even though I've just told you a story over a very short period of time, I mean, only in the last century, these aren't de depicted as only examples. All physicists, to a certain degree, used their imagination. And in the 21st century, in an era where information is becoming ever faster and where we need to adapt even faster, this way of thinking can help us process that much information. The value of thought experiments, diagrams, and challenging our perception should be noted, especially in this century where we should stay as open-minded as possible. The difference between physicists and dreamers and why physicists get such a bad reputation is that they apply those dreams to real life. In other words, the dream itself isn't the end. It is, in fact, only the beginning. It is what you decide to do with it that matters. It is how it empowers you as a knower. If you wish for something to happen, dream it, dream about it, give it some, give it some thought. Then apply it to real life. Then it is only a matter of hard work, devotion, and dedication that you're ready to put in, that sets you apart. And once you start doing that, you, like those physicists and dreamers, can start to wish it, dream it, and most importantly, do it. <laughs>